Hi, this is Axel from DreamSanctuary.net. This time, I want to present a short dream so I can emphasize a crucial difference between free association, usually of the Freudian kind, and spontaneous association. To contextualize this difference, I need a practical example, so let's go straight to the dream. As usual, we will follow the step-by-step -step way that has been used in the previous videos. If you like this way of doing things, I have since released these guidelines on a single A4 page, which you can download for free on my website. The idea is to print it out and fold it in half so it fits any dream journal. I've also added two appendices, one with quotes from Jung about dreams and the other with an example on how to apply the guidelines. If this interests you, you can find the link in the description box. Let's start with the dream. I had this dream in August 2021 and I named it First Day at Work. It was my first day as a worker at McDonald. I see other workers cooking many different orders at the same time. On my end, I had the task of cooking a single patty to prepare a burger. While this was not a huge task by any means, that was as much as I could manage at this time. Once cooked, I had to fold the carton box before giving it to the delivery team. It was quite a task because you had to lodge three parts into three holes for each of the four sides. I did it the best way I could and ended up with a square box with complex edges. One co-worker next to me gave me a look indicating that this was unnecessary and a waste of time. So now we come to the main topic that I want to discuss, which is free association versus spontaneous association. Let's focus on the symbol McDonald. When I woke up from the dream, I was actually upset at the dream. I was like, what is going on? Why am I being shown working for this evil corporation that sells inedible food? I've not been in McDonald's for five years and I would not go back even if I was paid. So all this inner work and focus on dream makes me work for McDonald's? Is the dream laughing at me, making fun of me? Am I doing something wrong? Anyway, I can go on and on. As you can see, I have very negative association. Hopefully you can notice the presence of an affect and you might be able to hear and feel this part of my psyche that reacts strongly to the symbol of McDonald. Once I calm down though, I try to remember the dream. And I remember when I entered this dream McDonald, I felt quite welcome, supported, which is not what I usually feel when I enter in a McDonald. And so I was trying to think, what is actually my association with McDonald? And I was like, that's right, entry position job, opportunity. So in fact, my associations are positive association. I hope you can notice that the value judgment, meaning it's a positive symbol, does not come with an affect. And so this is the difference. Free association moves away from the dream and it spiral into a complex. And we have all those very strong emotion. And this indicates ego consciousness. I must say I have no problem with uh, activated complex or you know affects the problem here is that we're working on a dream and the dream comes from the unconscious so the ego must learn what the unconscious is saying and not try to bring its own preconception into the dream it has to learn what the dream is saying on the other hand if we do spontaneous association we stay close to the dream we stay close to the feelings of the dreams for me, spontaneous association is the first thing that comes to mind. It's faster than thinking. It bypassed almost everything in ego consciousness and it does not come with a strong emotion. So when you work in a dream, you have to be careful that you're not doing free association from the standpoint of ego consciousness, but you're doing spontaneous association by staying close to the feeling of the dreams. Now we can work on the other symbols. The first one is the patty, which I see as a meat in a circular shape. And I usually see food as information. To fold a carton box is associated with to package, doing packaging. And the square box with complex edges, I try to represent it here. It's imagine a carton box in this complex origami on the side. I had the sense that this is unnecessary. It wasn't wrong, so to speak, but it wasn't required either. Now we have a look at my personal context and what came up for me is that I was writing an article about the symbolism of the movie The Green Knight and that was taking a lot of my time and I also had my birthday but somehow it came as irrelevant and nothing else came to mind. 
we can now go back to the dream and do it moment by moment. The first moment is the setting. It's entering this McDonald's, it's a new job, it's a new task, it's an opportunity. I have the feeling that I'm being welcomed, supported and surrounded by qualified people. The next moment is the task itself, which is cooking the patty, which I felt easy but hard or hard but easy. Then the next moment I have to do the packaging. It feels very delicate, it's a very tricky operation, I have to apply myself. And the last moment is the conclusion, which is the disapproval of the co-worker. There is this feeling that I'm doing something inappropriate or there is a waste of effort. Now that we have a good sense of each moment, in this next step we can relate the dream symbolism to the personal context. And so the first day at work at McDonald's, which is a setting, is me being supported by the unconscious in this new task, which is writing the article. Then I have to cook the single patty, which is to prepare the information. And it's interesting that the, the dream chose a patty. It could have chosen honey, a vegetable, maybe an apple, dairy, maybe something else. So I think the patty might have to do with the fact that it's nourishing or the circular shape might also play a role in this. Then I have to package the meal. And to package the meal means to make it into a form that can be delivered, transferred, communicated. So that's the act of writing. There's also this interesting aside between the three on three on four side. We know that three is usually linked with ego consciousness and four in, with the self. So maybe the three on three is building ego consciousness and doing it on four side has a sense of totality. I'm not too sure about it. I don't think it matters too much. And finally, there's the disapproval of the co-worker. The packaging is too complex for its purpose. That's the conclusion of the dream. And I translate this as the way I'm writing the article is too complex for its own good. So that's my interpretation. The unconscious is showing support in the way I'm engaged in the writing of the article, but it also shows that I'm doing it in an inappropriate manner. I feel very good with this interpretation. However, it's always useful to run it by a checklist to make sure I'm not making any typical mistakes. The first mistake that almost everybody does is, am I taking the dream literally or symbolically? In this case, I'm not working at McDonald's, so it's pretty easy to see that I'm working on the symbolism of working at McDonald's. And this might sound silly, but the number of people who, for instance, dream about getting back with the next girlfriend and then they conclude that they should go back in touch with their ex-girlfriend. And that's taking a dream literally. And that's very dangerous. Taking dreams literally is a recipe for disaster. The second step is, does the interpretation confirm something I knew before? Or did I learn something completely new? Because dreams come from the unconscious, therefore it's material that the ego doesn't know. Because unconscious means not conscious, so not related to ego consciousness. And in this case, I can confirm that before the dream, I had no idea I was that supported and I wasn't aware that the article was becoming too cluttered. Third, and this is also very important, does the interpretation feel self-congratulatory or does it have a humbling effect on the ego? This is about the topic of inflation. Inflation is where the ego overvalues itself, especially above the unconscious. And when you become arrogant, when you fall in love with your own interpretation where you flatter yourself. This is very dangerous. It's called hubris in Greek and it's the scene of pride in Christianity. In this interpretation there's a sense of comfort but I wouldn't call comfort being um, self-congratulatory. It's soothing in a way and also it's also critical because the co-worker is judging my work and saying this is inappropriate. So I would say that my interpretation has a humbling effect. It deflates the ego. It does not inflate it. Finally, does the interpretation teach something about others in the outer world or about yourself in the inner world? Again, we start from the assumption that a dream is the dramatic exposition in a symbolic form of your inner world, of the content of your consciousness in a way. And it shows what's going on, the dynamism that's happening. And so the goal is to figure what's happening so we can correct our attitude moving forward. 
this is something that almost everybody fails. For instance, let's say you dream about the fact that your father is angry. This does not mean that your father in the outer world is angry. It means that there's a part of your consciousness that is best represented by the symbol of the father that is angry towards the ego. So it teaches something about what's going on within, not about anything outside. Now I have to talk about the fact that every now and then you have a dream that will not fit this interpretation guideline. For me it happens maybe once every six months. And the reason I know that is because I've worked consistently with those guidelines. And thus when I have a dream that doesn't feel the same way as the others, I know I should work on it differently. So yes, every now and then you should be able to put those guidelines aside and work with the dream in a different manner. However, if my experience is anything to go by, those are pretty rare. Once I've validated my interpretation, I can take action on it. So what I've done is I've reworked my article so that it reads in a more straightforward manner. And I've removed all the unnecessary material, what you could call those complex edges, and I put it at the end as reference material. Because I had this dream almost a year ago, I can now look back on it and make some comments. The first one is that indeed the task was quite small, but it felt really important. And it had this collective dimension. Because I felt I wasn't writing just for me, I was writing for many different people. I also felt supported in, in that act because I found random information that was actually helping me as I was writing this article. It was exploring threads I had no idea how to develop. It's also the article I've received the most positive feedback out of all the ones I've written. So it looks like not only my interpretation is correct, but the dream was also emphasizing the fact that I work for, let's say, the collective. If you're interested in the article, you can find it on my website and it's called The Green Knight of Psychological Analysis. Having said that, you have to watch the movie, otherwise the analysis will make no sense. To finish this video, I would like to come back to this difference between free association and spontaneous association. You see, with free association, I was under an affect, and I judged the dream symbol very negatively. In comparison, with spontaneous association, I had positive things to say. So what is happening here? The answer seems to be that we are confusing emotion and feelings. So I'm going to talk about them separately. In a discussion with Marion Woodman, Robert Johnson talks about the feeling function. It says that we have this problem with language. For instance, for the word love, Sanskrit has 96 terms, ancient Persian has 80, Greek has three, maybe more actually, and English has only one, love, that's it. So we do live in an undifferentiated culture and language is no help. So what he suggests is that we should adopt a new word for feeling. He says, valuing would be a better word. And he continues, if something happens, what is my reaction to it? Value is the most differentiated term that I have available. What value do I put on that? Is it something noble? Is it something useful? Is it something fine? Is it something carefully differentiated? It is an assignment of value to that particular object. And this is what we find when we refer to Jung. Feeling is a rational and judging function. That means it evaluates or judges what something or someone is worth. This is where the key term value is very apt. The problems that we have is that we usually confuse feelings and emotion. And Jung has been very clear about that. He differentiated feeling and emotion. Emotion is better called affect. So what is an affect? In modern language, we would say that an affect is when someone is triggered, which means there is this strong emotional reaction marked by physical symptoms and disturbances in thinking. So when you are under an affect, you can't think straight and you can't act straight and your body is restless and it shows those physical innervations. Now if we turn towards the word emotion, we see that Carl Jung defines it as synonymous with affect. He writes, every feeling after attaining a certain strength releases physical innervations thus becoming an affect. 
For practical reasons, however, it is advisable to distinguish affect from feeling, since feeling can be a voluntarily disposable function, whereas affect is usually not. Similarly, affect is clearly distinguished from feeling by quite perceptible physical innovations, while feeling for the most part lacks them, or else their intensity is so slight that they can be demonstrated only by the most delicate instruments, as in the case of psychogalvanic phenomena. If we must differentiate feeling and affect, also called emotion, we can add mood. So what is a mood? Again, Robert Johnson says, My current definition of mood is that it occurs only in a man, and it consists of him being overwhelmed by the feminine side of his unconscious. When a man is in a mood, he becomes feminine, entirely unreliable. There is nothing masculine in a man in a mood. Marion Woodman responds that we must make a difference between a man being effeminate and a man being in his feminine strength. Robert Johnson agrees. He says, yes, you can be in your feminine power, but if that feminine side overwhelms him like a fog bank and he is at the mercy of it, then he is in a mood. A man is so vulnerable to his moods, and they are not feelings. This is a differentiation we must make in this discussion. A man's moods have nothing to do with his feelings. Feelings are a sense of value, and moods have no sense of values. They are fog banks. A man is virtually out of commission if he is in a mood. Let me attempt to summarize what we've seen up to now. We do actually live in an undifferentiated culture about feelings, and so we have to do our best to distinguish what is happening to us, because we lack the vocabulary. So, am I expressing my feelings and my values? Am I under an affect, and so a complex has been activated? Or am I in a mood, meaning that I'm being overwhelmed by a feminine content of the unconscious? Usually it's the anima for men. Because this is really important. When we do inner work, we have to be able to disidentify from the parts of our psyche that overwhelms the ego. Only this differentiation will allow us to work with those parts. For instance, Let's say you are in a mood, you can make this realization that I am not my mood. My mood is something that's overwhelming me, something that's visiting me, but I am not that mood. That mood is something else. This process is called objectivation, and by doing that, we differentiate the ego from other contents of the psyche. This is the starting point of any kind of inner work. And once we have this differentiation, we can work with it. For instance, through journaling, internal family systems, or active imagination. Those are the methods what works for me, but maybe you have others. I hope you found this video instructive, and I want to thank you for your attention. As always, links are in the description box.